Hello, welcome to BMC. I'm Dr. M. Today we are going to cover the topic of puppy socialization. There's a lot of outdated information out there about it, so join me. You'll learn something. So as a theme on this channel, we always look to what the experts are saying. And in this case, the AVSAB has a position statement out that discusses when puppy socialization occurs. And we know that that window tends to be closing around 16 weeks of age. When we take that knowledge and pair it with the knowledge that the most likely cause of owner surrender or animal death for animals under three is actually behavior, not diseases like parvovirus or any of the other diseases that we vaccinate for, it becomes clear why the current standard of care is to be very actively and deliberately working on socialization practices with your puppy as soon as you get them to your home. It is an outdated thought process to wait until after they've finished their puppy vaccination series to start socialization. That's too late. You've missed the window. The current standard of care to start diligently working on socialization with your puppy as soon as they've had one of their puppy vaccines and it's also important to remain current in that vaccine booster series as you are working on this socialization with your dog. Just remember to avoid high-risk areas until at least two weeks after the vaccine series is completed. For example, I wouldn't go to a pet store, I wouldn't go to a dog park, I wouldn't go to a boarding kennel, you know, the, like you have to use a little bit of common sense here. I wouldn't go to very high risk areas with a young puppy like this. And also dog parks are generally a bad idea. Anyway, we discussed that in the dog enrichment video. You can go watch that if you want to know more. So what I encourage people to do is to find a strictly positive reinforcement puppy class before the puppy even joins the household. If you start looking after you already have the puppy, this can make a lot of their socialization period pass by before you even find an appropriate class that has space for you to join. So make sure you have these sorts of things lined up before you have a dog join your household. Now it is important to recognize that because your dog is still in their vaccine series, that they are not fully protected at that point. So if you are arranging play dates with other dogs, make sure that those dogs are healthy and are vaccinated to minimize the risk to your puppy. So when we talk about socialization, what is it that we mean? Um, people often have misconceptions about this as well. They will think that it means simply bringing the dog everywhere and making sure that they experience everything. Um, some people will think that this only means meeting people and both of these things are incorrect. What's actually the most important part of all of this is that your dog has positive experiences. We want them to be demonstrating loose, wiggly, happy body language where they are easily eating some of their kibble or treats as they are in the environment. If it's too exciting or too scary and they are not happy, loose, wiggly puppies, then you are actually creating a negative experience and that is doing the opposite of what we're wanting from this socialization. It's crucial that you work to create environments and situations where your puppy feels confident, happy, and relaxed. It's only when they are able to feel that way that they can learn that the situation is a good one and a fun one. I will link below in the video description to a number of checklists that are available for these sorts of things. And often we want to have a few positive experiences for each of the items in the checklist. So often these checklists are divided into groups say a group um, around people. So you'd want to make sure that you expose your puppy to people who use mobility aids like wheelchairs and walking canes. You want to expose the puppy 
to people who have different skin colors, people who have beards, people who have very different voices than yours, maybe a deep or booming type of a voice. It's also important to make sure that the puppy sees people who are using things like umbrellas or wearing hats. All of these things need to be considered. Then if we move on to think about environment, really a lot of what we want to expose them to is different textures. So we want to be thinking about bridges and grates and lawn and gravel and pavement, if you can find it, snow, ice. <laughs> My dog's dreaming. Uh, sand, wading in water, maybe even swimming. All of those sorts of things in the environment are important. We also need to be thinking about different locations. So consider areas where there might be shopping carts or people pulling luggage, people on skateboards, people on bicycles. It's also important that you consider different sounds. So we want to, in a positive way, get our puppy used to the sounds of storms and fireworks and gunshots. Those sorts of things can often be quite frightening for pets and so if we can introduce them at a very quiet volume using some uh, music tracks that are designed for this purpose, then you can make it a very positive experience for the puppy to hear these things and have delicious treats and playtime while they're hearing these sounds at a low enough volume that they don't find it scary. And then you can eventually increase that volume as they gain confidence and positive experiences over time. So as you can see, there's a lot to think about here. We also need to be working on body handling. So this is where you start preparing your puppy to get used to physical exams from your veterinarian. So you need to be handling ears, opening the ear flap if it's a floppy ear dog. You need to be looking at eyes, examining the mouth, handling the body, using a stethoscope on the chest, handling the feet. You need to start working on nail trims in a positive way where the dog never feels stressed or worried about what's happening but instead is having a very positive experience and is enjoying what's going on. We also need to work on picking up the dog. Uh, collar grabs for in the case of an emergency. I would also work on things like wearing harnesses wearing jackets for when it's raining, wearing paw booties for if the pavement is too hot or you live somewhere with snow where they might need protective coverings over their feet. Part of the socialization is also making sure that you are exposing your puppy to all of the household sounds that we expect them to not be phased by. So this means things like vacuum cleaners. This would also be where you would start introducing a kennel as a resting place that is a wonderful spot to hang out. This is where you start introducing vehicles and traveling to places. There are so very many things that you have to work on and it's important to remember that this dog is just a baby who has no idea about the world and so having patience and working very hard to go at the dog's pace so they are never fearful is crucial to being successful. We also do need to work on exposure to other animals. So depending on your own situation, the specific list might vary a bit, but consider dogs of different sizes, consider cats, consider horses, consider other farm animals, consider uh, if they might be exposed to chickens or birds that you need them to not be chasing. Um, if you can start that exposure when they're young in a controlled way where you can reward the behavior that you want from them and where they have a good, relaxing, fun experience, that is the way to go about it. This also means that if you know your puppy is not having a good experience, you need to immediately stop and change the environment that you are currently exposing your puppy to. It might be overwhelming. You might be too close to something that is new for your puppy. They might need a longer period of time to investigate it on their own, at their own pace. You might need to be reinforcing their curiosity about it at a higher rate of reinforcements. I can't emphasize enough that the most important thing is that you do not 
Leave your puppy in situations where they're fearful. Don't let people handle them if your puppy doesn't want it. Remove them from the situation. Put space between you and whatever is stressing your puppy and protect that puppy as they are learning so much about their environment. That will help their confidence to grow and this will result in a better, happier, confident adult dog. Now I do also want to note here that genetics matter and the personality of the parents does affect the personality of the puppy. And so there are still some dogs who are fearful, who are anxious, who have separation anxiety, who have a fear-based aggression, and that is not necessarily because of poor socialization practices. There is a genetic component to personality as well. Kittens also have socialization periods. They end even earlier than a puppy's do, around 12 weeks of age for the kitten. And so this socialization work is also crucial for kittens and it's often even more overlooked than it is for our dogs. Building positive associations to kennels, car rides, people, other animals is a crucial part of a kitten's development and it's very important that we work hard at providing all of our pets with appropriate species specific socialization to set them up for the best life that we possibly can. Make sure that you work with a strictly positive reinforcement dog trainer or kitten trainer in order to get a handle on this socialization and to have a professional guiding you on dog body language or cat body language, also helping you learn about behavior modification and how to go about formulating training plans, how to approach things in situations where your animal just isn't quite certain. I will link in the video description an excellent blog that goes over which trainer certifications are reputable one to help you find a research-based positive reinforcement trainer. I did cover how that is the best way to modify animal behavior in a previous video. I'll link it here. Thank you so much for joining me. If you want to positively reinforce my efforts here, it would be fantastic if you could somehow interact with the video, like it, comment on it, share it with someone you know. That means the world to me. We put out new videos most Fridays and I hope you'll join me next week. Take care. Bye.